This stage is one of my favorite in the game. This little guy, so cute, so tiny, not quite 24 hours old. He's up and going. I know that he's eaten. His mom's doing well. And some of that anxiety starts to fade away because I know that more than likely he's going to do just fine. about a lambing kit and what sort of supplies I would want to make sure I have on hand when I'm getting ready to lamb. So full disclaimer, we're still pretty new at this. We're less than five years in to raising sheep, so I'm still learning as we go too. In fact, as I was putting this stuff together tonight, I thought, oh, there's a couple things that I should probably have on hand that I don't, so it was good for me too. So I thought I'd just go through what I think are the essentials for having on hand. And if there's something else that you think we should definitely have, leave it in the comments below. So I kind of broke it up into some different categories. And the first category that I have is stuff that you should have for a ewe. So I'll go through those and then I'll go through kind of keeping the lamb warm, feeding lambs, and then just some other miscellaneous type things. So things that you should have on hand for a ewe. There's two things, and in fact, I've had a pretty lengthy conversation over this item here in the last day or so. Let's get this all untangled. This is a prolapse harness. I'll show you how to put it on in another video. So basically this part of the harness is gonna go around the sheep's neck. This part will go down the back. These two straps will tighten on the rear legs. fit so that this part here is actually going to, one of them be for the rectum, one of them be for the vulva below. So what this will do is this will tighten up on the U, and if she's prolapsing, it'll help hold those internal organs back inside where they go. A lot of times that's used in conjunction with this, which is a prolapse spoon, which will kind of sit in there like this, will help hold if a U is having a rectal prolapse or having a vaginal prolapse, it'll help hold that stuff back in where it goes and help get you a little bit closer to lambing. As that lamb grows inside the U and things shift around inside, prolapses can be an issue. So the harness and the spoon is definitely something that I would have on hand just in case. So then as it gets a little bit closer to lambing, there's a couple things that you definitely want to make sure you're stocked up on. First, just some regular latex gloves. These come in handy anytime you're examining a U or even handling a lamb. Just helps keep your hands clean, helps keep that sanitary for the U. I actually have a box over here on the wall. I just have them mounted in a holder so that they're always easy to grab right by the sink. And kind of right in line with that would be the good old OB gloves. So anytime I'm pulling a lamb, I'll make sure that I use these just to make sure that it's nice and sanitary for the U um, and it helps me get where I need to get with my hands. Now, fun fact on these. <laughs> I don't know if I can do it if you guys are watching. I didn't do a very good job. Blow them up. Then put them on so that the part that was inside is now outside. The inside should be the cleaner part of the glove. So by flipping it around, you're able to make sure that any dirt or little particles that are on the outside of the glove are now against your hand. So the side that you're putting into the U is clean. Like I said, it's a lot harder to do when you're uh, trying to do it when you know somebody's watching. So OB gloves. Have a box of those nearby. Definitely a halter. I'm sure you have these lying around the barn. Have them close, easy to grab. So if you need to tie a U to help with a labor delivery or you need to move a U around, you know where a halter is and can grab it easily. So gloves, halter, stuff that you should have on hand for the use. 
All right, so now the lamb's born. Let's move into keeping the lamb warm. A few different things that I want to show you here. First of all, old towels. Don't throw them away, take them to the barn. I have a tub over here. I just put old towels in, so I always have them if I need them. When I'm done with them, I hand them over at gate, get them washed, get them cleaned and back to the barn. Um, when a lamb is born, those first few hours are crucial to making sure that it gets off and going. So just have that towel ready. You can dry off some of the mucus, especially around the nose and around the mouth to help get that lamb up and going. Even a vigorous rub down with a towel can do a lot to stimulate those internal organs. Towels, have them handy. Once the lamb is clean, uh, we have a heated room here that I'm standing in now. This is where our jugs are. So we can keep those lambs at about 50 degrees. If you're laying in a room, you may want to think about putting some sort of blanket on. Premier makes these. I sewed a few of these last year. It's just a piece of fleece. It's really easy to put together. This is the head hole for the lamb. And then there's a slot for each leg. It sits over the back like this. It can help hold that lamb's internal temperature. So there's lots of different products like this. Not a bad thing to have them on hand especially if that lamb is going to be staying in a barn where it's a little bit chillier. Anything you can do to help that lamb maintain its body energy is going to help it get off and going a lot quicker. This was something new. I actually got it as a Christmas present. I just cracked it open a few days ago. Got it as a Christmas present a couple years ago, actually, and for whatever reason, I never used it. But I did give it a try this week, and it worked pretty well. It's called the Little Critter. I'm reading through my cheat sheet because I don't know much about it. Little Critter Feeder. And essential in all lambing sheds. How this works is there's a pad inside here, kind of like this bean pad they put in the microwave for humans. It's got a little pad just like this. You stick it in the microwave, it gets up to temperature, then you slide it back in this bag, velcro it shut, then this sits over the lamb and velcros around, and it held temperature for probably close to an hour and a half. Just help that lamb gradually raise its core temperature. So one of the main ways that you can lose a baby lamb is just from hypothermia. So anything you can do to help keep it a little warm. I had a lamb that was really struggling getting going, so I stuck this blanket on it. It helped raise temperature up gradually. I'm going to get to tube feeding here in a minute, but you never want to tube feed a lamb unless it's warm. So if you can use something like this to help get its temperature up, that's handy. And of course, just having a heat lamp ready to go. These are the Prima heat lamps from Premier One. This is the only kind of heat lamp that we use in our barn. Um, super safe, super durable. Unlike some of the kind of chintzy heat lamps, this one is worth every penny. It also has a guard here on the bottom to catch bulbs that break. Um, definitely recommend these. You can set up an area if you have a cold lamp just with a heat lamp, cardboard box, lots of bedding, something like that. Easy things to have on hand just to be able to help bring that lamb's temperature up. So that's the heating stuff. I see I skipped this here. This would be for the birthing process. This is a snare. So you can see there's two ends here. You can put those around the legs, tighten them up to help with pulling. I'll be honest, I don't use this. I don't know if I've ever used this. I'm glad that I have it in case I need it, but a lot of times I'm able to do this when I need. All right, so we talked about stuff for the ewe, stuff for the birthing, bringing the lamb up to temperature. Once that lamb's born, there's a few things that I do right away. Uh, one of those is using my data sheet here. This clipboard stays in the barn. There's a place where I can write all important information. So I write down the sex, the date of birth, the dam, the sire, and then there's a spot to check mark when I've done that lamb's vaccinations and a place for use a place to write notes to. So however that works for you, it might be a sheet like this that's typed up, it might just be a notebook, somewhere to write down all that important information so you can keep track of that lamb data. Okay, so the lamb's warm. Um, if it's cold or struggling, you got enough temperature, you got to dry it off. Iodine, you want to have some of that candy. I'll um, bring this up a little bit closer so you can see. This is actually just a teat dip cup. You can see the iron ones in there. The nice thing about that is you can set this upright on a shelf or somewhere out of the way. You can clip it over a gate, over a panel, 
and then when you're ready to use it, just kind of slosh down that iodine. You want to make sure that you get that navel area good and clean with iodine, the highest concentration that you can have. That'll just help prevent any sort of bacteria from getting up in there for the umbilical cord with sex. All right, so that's kind of the stuff you need this first couple hours. Now, let's say you have a lamb that's struggling, isn't getting going. One of the most important things that you need for a baby animal is just to make sure that it gets its colostrum. So that was actually one of the things that I realized I didn't have any on hand. They make a powdered form that you can mix up with hot water. If you don't have any colostrum handy, if something happens to you, it's not producing anything, have that powdered colostrum just in case. Now I do have some in the freezer. So as I have used that produce an abundance, I'll milk them out and actually put it in a black bag and keep it in the freezer just in case I need it for another lamb. Now, in order to get that colostrum into a lamb, you're gonna need a stomach tube feeder. Um, real simple contraption. It's a 60 cc syringe and then, you see that, a rubber tube. I'll do a video on this in time because I'm sure I'll have another lamb in the tube here soon. Basically, you're just gonna kind of fish that tube down the lamb's throat, the colostrum's in the tube, and we'll just gradually push that plunger down. So make sure those lambs get colostrum. They gotta stay warm, they gotta have colostrum in order to get going, otherwise they're looking for a ticket out the door. Sometimes with the colostrum, I'll also use a little bit of this product, it's called NutriDrench. Um, it's just a nutritional supplement you can give to those lambs to help give them an extra boost to get going. So a lot of times I just mix the NutriDrench in with the colostrum before I tube them. Now, let's hope that you tube them with that colostrum if they need it. Maybe they're already up and eating off that you. That's the best case scenario. That's what I love to see when they kind of get after that you and you know that they're gonna get that first feeding in their tummy. But let's say something happens, you end up with a bottle baby. There's a few things that you're gonna need to have on hand. You're gonna need some lamb milk replacer. It's gotta be lamb. I know that people always ask, can they use calf? Can they use another type of product? Use the lamb. It's expensive, I know, but it's what they need. It's got the nutrients, it's all balanced for them. I actually keep mine in a five gallon bucket with a lid on. I just happen to find an empty bag to show you. This is the kind of bottle that I like to use. There's lots of different options out there. Even just like a one liter pop bottle with one of these pictured nipples, these are the way to go. I just like this plastic bottle because it's um, stronger. I can wash it out. I have hot water and sink over here to make sure that that stays nice and clean. Um, so I'll milk, mix up the milk replacer in this big measuring cup, mix it up with a whisk, dump it into this bottle, and I'm ready to bottle feed if I have to. So that's kind of like the first few days stuff. Now a couple other things you want to make sure that you have on hand for the lambing process. I'll go through these in no particular order. Tags and a tagger, you gotta be able to identify those lambs, especially once you have a few hitting the ground. I heard tags from Premier, they're an all flex tag. It's a scrapey tag, so it's got our flock ID right on it. Different numbering systems that you can use. I just start, the first two numbers are the year. So this year's tags start with two one, and then they just go up zero zero one, all the way up as high as they need them. So you need to have those tags on hand, and you have the tag on it too. Kind of in the same line, an elastrator and bands. Get a little bit closer with that. You can see these rubber bands are what we use to um, take off the tails, castrate the males also, to make sure that you have one of these handy. We try to do tails, usually when they're still in the jug, so within the first week or so, um, and we'll wait a little bit longer to castrate the males. All right, then the last couple things here. In terms of vaccinations or medicine that I like to have on hand for the lambs, within the first 24 hours, I'm giving them one cc of BOCI. That's a selenium and vitamin E that's gonna make sure that their uh, muscles are developing well, give them the nutrients here. So I have an abundance of three cc syringes and needle plugins to be able to give those. On the lambs especially, one needle, one syringe per lamb, toss it, get rid of it, um, don't mix it. And 
And then the other vaccine that I have yeah. is just a Barvax, which is a CB and T. Um, that's going to be your Clostridium, Type C and D, and even your tetanus toxoid. We vaccinate yeah. our babies for that with a booster every year. So they're giving some immunity to their lambs at birth. But within the first week, we're hitting those lambs yeah. with one dose of the CB and T. And then we're following up a couple weeks later with a booster dose of that. I was trying to think what other stuff would I make sure that I had candy. There are some medicines that we use occasionally. Um, Banamine is one. Have a good relationship with your vet so you know how to use that. But if you use had a hard labor, Banamine can be good for pain and inflammation. But again, make sure that you have a good relationship with a vet so that you're using that appropriately. And then Pen G, um, a penicillin, is another one that I'll use with you sometimes. Um, especially if I've had a pool lamp or if I'm worried about any type of infection, I'll give them a dose of that just to ward off any sort of bacteria. So those are the big things. Now some people talk about a kit, they'll keep everything in a tote, keep it handy, keep it clean. That's a great method to use. Um, we have cabinets and stuff, so everything's just handy, and I know that I have it if I need it. But definitely as you gear up for lambing, doesn't hurt to go through this checklist and make sure that you have what you need so that you're prepared. I guess my paper's over there now, but I actually made a checklist tonight. What are those things that I can make sure that I have? And it was a good method for me. Uh, we're just about two weeks in to lambing, so we're just kind of getting into the full swing. We have about 10 lambs on the ground so far, and we have about 100 and some ewes to go yet. So we're just getting started. I'll make sure that I keep these items stocked and ready to go. Uh, but it never hurts to be prepared. So wherever you are in that lambing process, if you are just getting started bringing your ewes, or if you have lambs getting ready to hit the ground, it doesn't hurt to go through and make sure that you have those items. So thanks for watching. I am excited for lambing, and I'm excited because I have a lot of ideas of stuff that I can show you in the lambing barn. So if you have any questions or if you have any ideas, stuff you want to know, how it works, how I use it, leave them in the comments below and I'd be happy to get back to you on that. So thanks for watching and stay tuned for more adventures farming beyond the box. Mm -hmm.